Hey everyone, I am Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're talking about the R9 390 and R9 380. I know it's old news now that the Fury X is out and speaking of which we've got two Fury X's here on the table as stand-ins because I had to send the 390 and 380 back as part of our reviewer agreement with Sapphire. So we're, we're doing a retro look. I already overclocked the 390 and 380. It's already on the website but I haven't published it yet and that's what we're looking at today for, for video format of the overclocking procedures for the 390 and 380. It's pretty easy. We basically use AMD's overdrive at the time of review, which was when these cards launched. There were no proper tools available for, for overvolting. There's only AMD's overdrive, which allows overclocking of the core clock, the memory clock, and the power percent target increase, which is the same as Maxwell's power percent increase. You basically just increase the percent power allowance over TDP. Overclocking the video cards will impact a few things. We're mostly changing the memory and core clock. The power percent increase allows these jumps in the clock rates, but doesn't really change much else. It obviously draws a bit more power, but that's sort of the end of the story there. And the base power is 275 watts for the 390, the R9 390. So that's TDP, and the 380 is 190 watts, which is actually a slight improvement over the 280. Both of these cards are refreshes of the 200 series, so uh, the 285 would be one of them, the 290, and I'm using the word refresh because it's a little bit different than a rebadge. With a refresh, AMD has taken the same architecture and slightly improved it by doing a few things like overclocking it by an extra 50 megahertz and things like that, and because of this overclock, there's not a lot of room for us to further overclock it because they've already done it factory to really the level that the sort of old architecture will allow at this point. Overclocking the core clock will impact the texture fill rate, which is a product of the TMUs, the texture mapping units, and the core clock. You multiply them to get the texture fill rate. And then it also just generally speeds things up a bit. Overclocking the memory speeds up memory transactions. So this actually does have a slight impact on the non-HBM cards, and that's worth noting here. Only the Fury X is HBM right now, high bandwidth memory. So the 390 and 380 that we looked at a couple weeks ago when I did this overclocking test were on the more traditional GDDR5. This chart shows the performance output gained by the small overclocks that were done. So what you're looking at is the increment for each overclock and you see them in steps and they're performed with two tests. There is a short pass, basically five minutes, does it work? And then there's an endurance test that's 25 minutes to see if it actually survives in the long term when playing a game. You can see that we increased the power percent target by the maximum 20% allowed for the R9 380 and 50% for the R9 390. And the clock rate of the 380, we were able to get a total overclock of 8.4%, which is certainly not huge. And the overclock for the R9 390 was about 8.5%. Any more than this, and we suddenly exhibited instability, which in, in this instance, is described as red flickering and textures flickering, artifacting visually, and then uh, eventually a driver failure if you go too far over the line. So that's where our limiter was with these tests. Whether or not this impacts performance is really shown in these charts and, and it's kind of questionable whether it's worth your time. So for the 390 and 380 overclocked, looking at the benchmark charts, the FPS, you see about a 1 to 7% frame rate gain frame rates per second for the AMD cards when overclocked. And again, this is because they've already eked out as much as possible in terms of the core clock for the new series over the existing architecture on the old series. So at best you get 7% in our testing, I think maybe 8% at absolute max. And you're incre increasing the power draw, increasing the abuse on the GPU itself. So whether that trade-off is worth four to five frames per second is really somewhat questionable. I certainly wouldn't do it, but if you'd like to, it's not hard. It's very easy with AMD's overdrive utility. Uh, there are tools that exist with voltage changes as well. I haven't used any of them for the 300 series because we don't have 300 cards anymore. But that's where the results lie for the AMD 300 series overclocking. Two items that are worth note, the power draw increase, I've gotten this chart as well, is under 20 watts additional for system peak load for both of these cards when overclocked. So not a huge power draw gain, but they're pretty high at the, the 275 and 190 watt range anyway. So you do get a bit more draw out of that when overclocked. And then 
for the temperatures, the sapphire coolers are actually, again, very impressive. This was the thing I was most impressed with when I benchmarked and reviewed the 390 and 380 a week or two ago was the sapphire cooler. And in this case, we can see that they're effectively the same temperature with the overclock. And a lot of that is because the, the fans will increase their speed based on demand of the GPU. They're trying to keep it at a certain temperature. And in this case, it's about 45 Celsius Delta T, which is 60, 65, 66 absolute temperature. Overall, the overclocking experience with the 390 and 380 feels somewhat pointless. We only get one to 7% frame rate increase, which in the real world translates to maybe five frames per second increase. So if you're playing a game and you're borderline 60, 55 to 60, you're really not gonna notice for the most part. You'll see a tear every now and then, but it's, it's certainly not, in my view, worth the added abuse to the card. It's definitely something I would recommend trying if you have AMD devices. It's certainly worth playing around with to learn about overclocking, but I wouldn't push it at the absolute maximum power percent target and core clock for long periods of time because it does wear down the GPU. And this isn't just AMD I'm talking about, this is anything. This is Intel CPUs, AMD CPUs, Nvidia GPUs. Any kind of overclocking does add abuse to the chip, especially if you're over volting and it can kill it early. It decreases the longevity of the silicon die in there. And compared to the GTX 980 Ti that I reviewed recently, the overclocking for the 300 series is, is certainly a bit lower. It's not as exciting. The GTX 980 Ti gets about a 40% clock rate gain, which is a noteworthy performance gain when overclocked. And the 980 Ti Hybrid, which is the liquid cooled one, can overclock even higher than reference because it's on a liquid. And that's, that's a lot of room to play with. That gets to be fairly substantial in your frame rate as indicated by the 980 Ti Hybrid outperforming the Titan X, which is a much more expensive card by a couple hundred dollars. So in that instance, overclocking is worth it, but you still have these same warnings in place and the same concerns of damaging longevity of the chip. For the 390 and 380, it's not really too worth it unless you just want to play around. The Fury X is what we're targeting next, so do stay tuned for that. And if you like this content, as always, you can support the journalism research and all the videos and writing produced by the team on Patreon. Check that link in the post roll video, and I will see you all next time.